Exactly 50 years ago today, the Beatles played their first concert in America, and one of the people in the audience that day was legendary Buffalo radio DJ Harv Moore. Our Scott Brown sat down with Moore, who talks about experiencing a full day of Beatlemania a half century ago. Tuesday, February 11th, 1964, marked day three of the British invasion of America. And the Beatles were on a train from New York City to Washington, D.C. They had just appeared in front of 73 million people on the Ed Sullivan Show launching Beatlemania, and now they were headed to play their first ever concert in the States. 50 years ago, I was working at WPGC, Washington, D.C. Longtime Buffalo disc jockey Harp Moore was a morning DJ at one of Washington's top rock and roll stations at the time. Dropping out of the top 10 tunes this week on WPGC. By that time, when they came to D.C., they were just on the verge of being superstars. They were the Beatles, but they weren't the Beatles, you know. You know. The Beatles were due to arrive at Washington's Union Station at just before four in the afternoon. My program director, Dean Griffith, said, Harvard, I want you to get down to Union Station with a tape recorder and get an interview with the Beatles. <laughs> so, I said, okay. Well, I was there, and they came off the train, and they were just whisked right by everybody. Right by everybody, including Harv. There he is in this picture, right behind John Lennon, being left behind in the Beatles' wake. From the train station, the Beatles went to the Washington Coliseum for a sound check and a quick press conference. What was that press conference like? They were so great. I mean, they were so, just so gracious. They were funny. Uh, they, they, they talked with us, uh, and uh, they loved our, the gifts that we brought them, the, the uh, WPGC sweatshirts. And uh, as a matter of fact, they put them on right away. Unfortunately, nobody thought to bring a camera. You know, we, we, we had no clue what was about to happen. Did you think it was possible this was just going to be a fad? Definitely. I thought, yeah, I think everybody did. Well, there were a group from England, four guys that were creating a lot of noise around the, around the world, uh, but nobody really knew that this was going to become a, a major force in music. That night at the Washington Coliseum, two important events occurred in Harv Moore's life. He got to see the Beatles' first U.S. concert, and although he didn't realize it at the time, he would also meet his future wife. Harv had been on stage with a number of other DJs, and when it was time for the concert to begin, he left the stage. We were escorted by the police, and I could see out of the corner of my eyes these girls literally running across the seats of chairs shouting, who is he, who is he? I had on a blue uh, a blazer and I had on black pants, I had beetle boots on and I had long hair and they thought I guess I was with the entourage and they knocked me down. Knocked me down, I fell on top of this beautiful brunette that two years later I met and she said, do you know you fell on me at the Beatles concert? And I said, really? She said, yeah, well, we dated and got married two years later. But that was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty special. And now from the Washington DC Coliseum, the world's most exciting group, Capitol Recording Stars, The Beatles. As far as the concert itself, as I went to the back of the Coliseum to watch the show, you couldn't hear anything. It was just constant bedlam. Uh, you know, girls screaming, and they were literally screaming. It was just bedlam, is the best way I can describe it. Harv's brush with the Beatles didn't end when the concert was over, and that's because he and a fellow DJ, Bob Raleigh, went to the Beatles' hotel. They got past security and went right to the Beatles' hotel room. Went to the door, knocked on the door. They opened the door. Who are you guys? Bob Raleigh and Harv Moore from WPGC. Okay, come on in. We walked into the room, and there they sat around a coffee table eating spaghetti. <laughs> and Ringo's eating spaghetti, looks up and he says, who are you guys? We're disc jockeys. You're not supposed to be here. And they ushered us out. <laughs> Harp Moore has spent more than 50 years in radio, and he's met dozens and dozens of stars. But as he looks back on his career, February 11, 1964, tops them all. The Beatles, uh, I can't think of anything that could possibly surpass that, that day, that, that day in Washington, D.C. Hey! 